Hey everyone, it's Delighted here. Today we're going to practice our initial settlement placements. This is inspired by Neonate. He's also a Catan YouTuber. I recommend you check him out. I'll put a link in the description below. Alright, so let's look at the board. If you were in the first position, where would you place? Go ahead and take the time to pause the video and figure it out. Alright, I hope you have your answer now. If you look at the board, you realize that there is clustered wheat and it is low ore, and there's only a single strong ore on this board. So that leaves two options, since strong ore wins games. So the two options are the 3118 or the 398. We can see that the 398 is a lot stronger because first of all, if you get wheat and everyone knows no wheat equals defeat, and you need that wheat to complement the ore to make cities. Also, noting the cluster of wheat, if you don't pick a wheat spot, then you're going to get the eventual worst wheat spot in the game because you also have to go last and everyone needs wheat. No wheat equals defeat. You get 11 points of production versus the 9 if you choose a 398 versus a 3118. So I think it's quite obvious that you should choose 398. So, at second position, where do you place your settlement? First off, we have to look at the potential wheat spots, since everyone knows you have to have wheat. If you look at the board, you realize that the three strongest wheat spots are the 11, 10, 6, 10, 3, 9, and the 6, 9. Those are the three best wheat spots. Like I said earlier, no wheat equals defeat. The reasoning behind that is because you need wheat to build everything. You need wheat to build a settlement, a city, and a development card, and all of those basically produce resource, all those do something, rather than a road which does not contribute to any victory points or production at all. So that's the reason why behind no wheat equals defeat, if you didn't know that before. Something to note as second position is, if you do not pick a wheat spot, then you're going to get the worst wheat spot. So let's rank these wheat spots real quick. To me, the 11, 10, 6 is the best wheat spot, and then coming in second place, it's the 10, 3, 9, and then lastly, the worst wheat spot is the 6, 9. So if you were to choose anything that is not the best wheat spot now, then you're going to get the worst wheat spot, which is a 6-9 for your second pick. So your two options is basically pick the strongest wheat spot, which is the 11-10-6, or choose something that is not one of these wheat spots and get stuck with the 6-9. Let's say you go with taking a non-wheat spot and then you, you're okay with getting the 6-9 as your second pick. So let's see where that is. To me, the best spot is the four five five you would get four out of the five resources and you'd be you'd have strong enough resources to get longest road but the ultimate question you have to ask yourself is can i win with just these resources with these spots and the answer to that i think is yes however i can i have a higher chance of winning choosing another spot and that's why my final pick is going to be the eleven ten six. Having ore on a low ore board is very important, even if it is just a little bit of ore. And looking at the board and pointing my road towards the brick port, there's a lot of strong brick spots on this board that'll synergize with the brick port that second position will look forward to. So now for third position, where would you place a settlement? Like with second position, there are two options. It's the first, take the better wheat spot. And the second option is to not take a wheat spot and then get the worst one. Option A is to go with the wheat and then wait for fourth position to play and then put down another settlement wherever that goes with it best. And then option B is to pick the non-wheat spot and then be content with the 6-9 knowing that you're going to get it second. So my final pick is the 8-3-11 and the reason behind this is because you're pointing your road towards the 8-11 and that will eventually get you to the strong ore which is going to help you win the game. And that 8-11 spot is a very good spot as you also get a 3 for 1 port. The reasoning behind the 1 to 1 wood brick ratio is because you need wood and brick together as a pair. You can't do anything with that wood and you can't do anything with that brick. Knowing that your second settlement was going to be on the 6-9, you're going to have very strong ore wheat sheet, which sets you up for success and later in the game. The only risk with this spot is 4th position going on the 8-11. However, that is quite unlikely as uh, the 8-11 only has 7 points of production. So where would you go as 4th position? Try to go ahead and put both your settlements down as you get to go twice because you're 4th position. 
So some initial thoughts is what about a port strategy and rejecting the wheat as a whole? So if you were to do a port strategy, would you go with a wood port strategy or a wheat port strategy? Since both are very plentiful on this board and both ports are very good. So for sure, you'd want to go with the 455 because it is strong wood and sheep. And the only thing you have to decide is, do I want to go place on the 4, 6, 10 and going with the wood port strategy or go on the 5, 12, 8 and going for the sheep strategy? The answer to this is none. Port strategies are bad. Let's run some winning simulations real quick. If you run uh, a simulation to see who wins using what strategy, the ore wheat sheep player will use the least amount of resources to win. And then comes in second is the road player. And then coming in last, it is the port strategy. And the reason why behind this is because you're sacrificing other resources to prioritize a single resource in order to convert for other resources. So in turn, you need twice as many resources, you need twice as many sheep or twice as many wood just so you can convert it into an ore, while other people are just naturally producing ore, which is why poor strategy is inherently bad, because you need to have twice the amount of production just to keep up with their opponents. I'm not saying they don't work, but they put you at an automatic disadvantage. So if there's another option available, then you should definitely take it. So here's another fun thing to think about. What if you take the 811 and screw over third position? purple. So you know that you have to get wheat also. So if you could choose this option, your, your two settlements are going to be the 1039 and the 811. And if you look at it, that is two little points of production. The 811 has seven and the 1039 only has nine. So eight plus seven, 16 points, which is not enough to win. That puts you at a crippling start and you're sacrificing your own production just to screw, screw over someone else. So the logic behind the spot is you need to choose the wheat and the best wheat is 10, 3, 9 because, you know, no wheat equals defeat. And in, in turn, you have to choose a spot that goes best with it. So my two picks are the 10, 3, 9 and the 4, 6, 5. The reasoning for picking the 4, 6, 5 is because it is close to a 1 to 1 brick wood ratio, which is what you want. And you have strong wood and you're pointing your road towards the wood port and that'll eventually help you convert to the ore that you're missing. It's also important to note that you have to place your second settlement 4, 6, 5 because that'll give you free road to capture the wood port immediately. Also, by pointing your road upwards on number 4, which is the 10, 3, 9, it gives you potential to to connect and you know that the 6-9 is going to be taken soon because third position still needs wheat and then the 4-6-10 is probably going to be taken also because that is a very good spot. So the only option to point your road is upwards for the 10-3-9. And in addition to pointing your road upwards, you have potential to connect your roads. And by choosing these two spots, you have a very strong potential to get longest road. So if you were in the third position, where do you place the settlement? As third position, I would place my settlement on the 6-9 because you need wheat and it was stated earlier that this is the only wheat spot left so you're forced to take this unless you want to lose the game, which you don't. So on pointing your road, you want you don't want to point it upwards because that's obviously a useless road and you don't want to point it down to the left because you're going to be racing against second position and you know that second position is probably going to choose a brick spot because he obviously has intention to get to the brick port. So that leaves you pointing your road towards the down and to the right and it still threatens a race with green but you might have a small chance of winning. In general, this road is relatively useless because your your priority is to get to the 811 or brick anyways. There's no point of racing. So if you're in second position, where would you place your settlement? I would place my settlement on the 4, 6, 10 because you get a strong 1 to 1 wood brick ratio and it's 6 points of wood, 5 points of brick and you start off with the free road which is really really nice and in addition it satisfies the high brick for the brick port. Also in general this is just 11 points of production and that's very strong and by placing it on the 4, 6, 10 you get to secure the 4, 10 and you're eventually going to get more ore and 3 for 1 port. The only issue is you have no access to sheep but that's fine because you have ports, you can trade for sheep as sheep is relatively plentiful on this board and sheep in general sucks. Alright, last pick of the game. So if you were first position, where would you place your settlement then? So you have four potential spots left and you have to figure out which one is the best one. But first, here are things to consider to help you figure out which is the best spot. Or is always good. You always obviously want the highest production also. And as first position, you're already going to have the three for one port or you're eventually going to have it. 
Sheep is always relatively useless, and wood is also relatively useless without brick, and you're not going to have brick. And in general, you don't have very good road building production because you don't have brick. So you're in a tight spot right now since you're going to get two relatively useless resources. So my final pick would be the 5128, and the reasoning behind this is because it's 10 points of production. And if you looked at all those spots, this is the second best production points count. And the sheep port is relatively useless, so you wouldn't want to place on the 5512. And the reason why the sheep port is useless is because you're already going to have a 3 for 1, and 4 points of sheep is not enough to drive a sheep port to sacrifice a point of production. For the 5128, I don't point my road upwards because I know that blue, fourth position, has a lot of road building potential, and blue would just love to cut me off. And as the ore wheat sheep player, I can't afford to be cut off at all, as every single one of my roads are very, very precious. In addition, I don't choose the 538 because I value one point of ore more than two points of sheep. In addition, by placing on the 5128, this is my second pick, so I automatically start off with an ore, which is always very valuable. So in summary, Green has 21 points, and he's going for the largest army. Green is eventually going to get the three for one port. Gray also has 21 points, and he's going to be going for the longest road. And Gray won't have any sheep, but that's okay since he's going to have the brick port, and he's going to have a three for one point eventually. And also, it's pretty nice, but he's going to have a good amount of ore in this low ore board. Purple is sort of at a disadvantage, but Purple only has 18 points, and Purple will be going for largest army. Eventually, once Purple builds on the 811, Purple will have all the resources and the 3 for 1 port. So looking at Blue, they are going to have 21 points, and they are going to go for the longest road, because they have a lot of road bidding potential, and they are going to go for the wood port. And Blue is probably going to build a settlement at the 4-5, and another settlement at the 5-12, and probably can expand some other areas. Blue has a lot of expansion potential. The only issue for Blue is getting the ore, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue because he has a wood port. So, what are your thoughts? Do you agree or disagree? Do you have any feedback? Any way I can make this better? Uh, I'd love to know, so just let me know in the comments.